And most of your stress is because you're thinking about too many things at once. In fact, when people don't do things, it's not because they can't. It's not even because they don't want to. It's because of the way they are focusing on what I call chunking things. When people don't follow through, here's what they do. I'll give you an example. Who here believes exercise is very important, but you don't exercise regularly? Let me see a show of hands. Raise your hand. <laughs> More hands than most of us want to raise our hand, right? Now, who here really focuses, or I should say, exercises regularly? Raise your hand. Regularly. Okay, great. Who here does not exercise regularly, even though you believe it's important? Just be truthful. Okay, great. So let's see what the difference is here. A person here who does not exercise regularly, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to tell me why you don't exercise regularly. Be truthful. Okay? Yes, sir. I don't have the time. Now, is that true? <laughs> he even knows it's not true. He's going to answer you first. No. But it feels like he doesn't have the time because time is emotion. And he's got so many other things he is focused on getting results in that adding this to the list seems like a lot, right? And the other things are very important to him, like his business. I don't have the time. He has the time. What's the real reason he doesn't do it? Because of the way he thinks about exercise. When he focuses on what it would take to exercise, he does it very differently than someone who follows through. When you think about exercising, what's involved? Okay, he starts thinking about, I got to get to mile 14 of the London Marathon, and that, even the thought of trying to get to the 14th mile, much less the 25th mile, is like beyond my imagination right now. So he is what I call overchunked. He's not thinking about what he wants, he's thinking about what's painful. You just saw a perfect example. He's not even thinking about victory or succeeding. So the chance of him following through on something that he associates major pain to, when he can do something else right now he can feel competent or successful at, his chances of following through are very limited. How many will follow that? Say I. His focus is on failure. His focus is on pain. That's why he isn't following through, okay? He's also focused on the 14th mile of a marathon rather than today's workout. Which one seems more daunting to you? <laughs> so when you think of what, it, and here's also what he's thinking about. He's thinking about the process, not the outcome or result he wants. And when you think about what it's gonna take to do something, usually it takes a lot and you're not gonna wanna do it. So he's overchunked himself. He's trying to eat the whale whole without taking any smaller bites. And it seems too big for him, so he says, well, I'll do it when? Later, as my Australian friends would say, later, <laughs> right? And of course, the problem with doing it tomorrow is when you get to tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and tomorrow never comes. So, and you keep promising yourself. By the way, what does this do to you emotionally when you keep breaking your own promises with yourself? Or you keep failing to do things that you know are important? Does it increase your level of certainty and confidence? No. What it does is it erodes it. And when you erode confidence in one area, believe it or not, it affects the other areas too. Do you believe me on that? Yeah. Don't believe me. What about your own life experience? Maybe not one area, but it starts to be multiple areas. It sure does. Another reason why somebody doesn't exercise or do anything is because they don't just chunk it too big, they chunk it in too many details. I'll give you a perfect example. So I asked somebody one time, I said, uh, okay, how important is exercise? Is? Oh, exercise is extremely important. Really? Okay, good. And, Tell me, why don't you exercise regularly? Well, I, you know, I just don't have time. Okay, everybody gives that answer. That sounds wonderful. So tell me though, don't tell me about how much time you don't have. Tell me this. When you think about exercising, what do you think about? Which is a way of saying, what do you focus on? And so this woman says to me, well, my gosh, you know, I, 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 mean, I, I mean, what do you mean what do I think about? Well, let's say I said to you, you, you gotta start exercising and I'm gonna put a gun to the head of your children and I will do very horrible things and hurt them badly if you don't exercise. Could you do it? Oh yeah, I could do it. You know, if, I, if, you, if some mafia person came here and said, I'm gonna kill your children if you don't exercise every day, how many think you could find a way to exercise every day no matter what your time constraints may be? So remember this, remember this. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. I'll say that again. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation or drive, having strong enough reasons. If you got a strong enough reason, you could figure out the time, couldn't you? 
So the biggest part of life and time management is knowing what you want and having enough reasons to follow through. But there is one more piece. If you make enough reasons to follow through and you know what you want, but you make the task overwhelming, you'll be overwhelmed. So I said to her, forget what I said. Let's just say you're really going to start exercising. You're going to do it regularly. How would you do it? What, 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 what's involved with exercising? What's involved with exercising? What do you focus? She goes, well, if I was going to work out regularly, I'd, I'd, I'd have to find a, a club to join. I said, okay. Well, so then what? She goes, well, what, you want to know the whole process? Yes. Tell me the whole process of what it would take to exercise. She goes, oh, my God. I, I'd, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to get on the web and search for, like, all the exercise places around my home. And, I, you know, then I have to look through those and see which one is probably closest or which one is, you know, probably nicest. And I don't really know, so I probably have to search on the web and, like, read about each of them and get a sense and see the pictures of the place. But, of course, you know, it's never the way they really show it to you. They always show you the best pictures. It's not really that nice. So then I have to get in my car, and i got to find these places. So, you know, I have to Google the location and look it up. And then I drive there, and, you know, a lot of times the instructions are wrong on Google. So, sure enough, I get the place that's not even the right place. And then I have to call the place on my cell phone. Then after I call the place, I can write down the directions. Of course, I probably don't have a pen. I mean, you know how it is when you're driving. And so finally, I get a pen, I draw down the directions, or try to remember in my mind, and I get to the place, and now I gotta get a ticket, you know, how you get that ticket, and then I gotta go find a parking space, and then I find the parking space, and what do I gotta do? Now I gotta go into this place. And when you go in the place, you can't just go look around. They want to escort you, don't they? Some salesperson wants to escort me, so I gotta go with the salesperson. They walk me around, they show me the locker room, and they show me this, and they show me that, and they show me all the stuff. And then let's say I wanna even buy it here. I can't just give them a credit card. They want me to fill out a little application. Like I'm two years old again. I'm in high school. Oh, come on, give me a break. And then I fill out the application and I got to pay them. And then they want to sell me a 10 million year membership. And I just want to try this for six months. And then after all that, then they want to take a picture that looks worse when you take it than your driver's license. Plus, after that, now what I do? Now I got to flash the card, go into work out. And what I got to do work out? I got to take off all my clothes and I got to hang them up in this tiny little locker where my stuff doesn't really fit and it's going to get wrinkled and I know it's going to fall off and it's going to get wrinkled and it's going to be terrible. And so let's say now I do that and so I go to the first station. I got to figure out which station to go to. So now they probably want to give me some trainer who's going to tell me what to do. But let's say I do it on my own. I go to the first station, somebody's sitting, some sweaty, smelly person who gets up and they, they got sweat all over. So now I gotta take my towel and I gotta wipe it all off. And then, and then I gotta adjust the weight. And then I don't know what the right weight is. And I gotta adjust it again and get the hassle, figure out how to adjust it. And then I finally do my exercise and then I gotta wipe the thing off. And then I gotta go find the second station. And maybe there's somebody there. Maybe it's all sweaty and I don't know the numbers. And after I do all these ones, station after station after station after station, now I gotta go to the locker room. And, and take off my sweaty clothes, which I'm gonna put in a bag, which I know is gonna stink up my car. And then I gotta go in and take a shower, and maybe I'll first do a steam room or something, but then I'm gonna see body parts of other people I don't even wanna see. And then, then I gotta go and I gotta do my hair, and I gotta do my makeup all over again. Gotta start all over my makeup, do the whole thing, and all these little pieces. And then I gotta put on my now wrinkled clothes, and now I can't even just leave. I gotta go to the front, and I gotta get my ticket stamped so I don't have to pay for it. Then I gotta find my car, which I forgot where it is, and then I gotta show it to the guy, and then I drive out. That's what it takes to work out. <laughs> well, what does it take to eat? Pfft, just do it. <laughs> what do you mean just do it? Well, I don't know. What, what kind do you want? Tell you. Okay, I know 12 places. Let's go. <laughs> well, what do you mean? See, eating is one chunk. Exercising is 3,229. Where every little step of what I got to do, I think about all, all the consequences and the elements and the pieces. And that's why they don't do it. They're overchunked. What you focus on, you feel. What you feel, you are moved to somehow actuate. <laughs>